Hello again. Today our topic is direct memory access, DMA. Data transfer to and from peripherals may be handled in one of the three possible modes. Programmed I.O., interrupt initiated I.O., and direct memory access. In the previous videos, we discussed the first two methods. In a programmed I.O., the processor keeps on scanning whether any device is ready for data transfer. And if one is ready, the processor dedicates itself in transferring the data between I.O. and memory. The transfer rate is high, but there is a waste of time on checking the flux. And the CPU cannot get involved in any activity during the transfer. In interrupted driven I.O., whenever the device is ready for the transfer, it interrupts the processor. The processor completes execution, its ongoing instruction. Then it saves its current state, the retain address, and the switches to data transfer. The processor does not keep scanning for peripherals ready for data transfer, but it is fully involved in the data transfer. These two methods are efficient for transferring a few amount of data. For transferring a large amount of data, DMA is used. DMA was developed by Intel to transfer data at fast rates. DMA allows the device to transfer data directly to or from memory without CPU involvement. The unit that controls the details of transfer is called DMA controller. Suppose that one of the I.O. devices wants to transfer data to or from memory. It sends the DMA request to the DMA controller. DMA controller accepts the device request and asks the CPU to hold for a few clock cycles by sending it the hold request. After receiving the hold request from DMA controller, CPU relinquishes the bus or leaves it and sends the hold acknowledgement signal to DMA controller. The request from DMA and the acknowledgement from the CPU is called handshaking. Now DMA controller becomes the master for the buses. After receiving the old acknowledgement from the CPU, DMA controller acknowledges I.O. device, device acknowledgement, that the data transfer can be performed. And under the control of DMA, the transfer is made between the I.O. device and memory or vice versa. And here we have the control signal, I.O. read-write. When the data transfer is completed, the DMA is uninterrupt to inform the processor that the task is finished and the processor can take control over the bus again and resumes its work. Whenever a processor is requested to read or write a block of data, it instructs the DMA by sending to it the following information. The address of the I.O. device that wants to read or write data. And this information is usually stored in a special register in DMA called data register. The operation to be performed, read or write operation, and it places this information in a read or write control lines. The starting address of or for the data block in memory from where the data block has to be read or where the data block has to be written in memory. It depends whether memory is source or destination and places this information in a register called the start address register. And to complete the transfer, DMA should be informed of the word count, how many words are to be read or written, and it places this information 
in a word count register in DMA. After each transfer, the DMA controller increments its address register or start address register and decrements its word count register. The word count register is checked for zero after each transfer. After completing the transfer, the DMA removes its bus request and informs the CPU of the termination of the transfer by means of interrupt. The DMA controller transfers data in one of the following three modes. The first one is called the burst mode. According to this mode, once the DMA gains the charge of the system bus, then it releases the system bus only after completion of the transfer. DMA releases the system bus only after completing the transfer. During this time, the CPU has to wait for the system bus. The second mode is called cycle stealing mode. In this mode, the DMA controller forces the CPU to stop its operation and relinquish the control over the bus for a short term, one or more clock cycle to DMA controller. For example, after the transfer of one byte, the DMA controller releases the bus. So in this mode, the DMA controller steals the clock cycle for transferring every byte. And the third mode is called transparent mode. In this mode, the DMA controller takes the charge of the system bus only if the processor does not require the system bus. The main advantages of DMA are transferring the data without the involvement of the processor will speed up the read-write task. Next, DMA reduces the clock cycles required to read or write a block of data. Implementing DMA also reduces the overhead of the processor. The disadvantages are the cost of implementing the DMA controller and cache coherence problem can occur while using the DMA controller. Cache coherence occurs when a DMA transfer changes the content of main memory that has been previously cached by the processor. So we'll have two copies of some data items. Compared to other modes of transfer, programmed I.O. and interrupt initiated I.O., DMA is more efficient for transferring a large amount of data. For today, that's all. Thank you.